Good morning, good afternoon, ignorant millennials. Welcome, welcome to the Ignorant Millennials channel. I'm your host, Kat. I'm not riding solo today. I've got a gentleman, a beautiful gentleman here, you know, Bob Marley. You might think that's what the t-shirt represents, but it doesn't represent Bob Marley. He will tell us what it represents over there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, before we go any further, guys, we're selling merchandise, hey? We're selling t-shirts, you know, and we've got like beautiful colors. We've got gray, we've got navy blue, we've got black, and we might have beige if it's in stock because that thing was selling like hotcakes also. So yeah, just hit, hit, hit us up on ignorantmillennials.co.za um, and get yourself, you know, we've got self deliver. I mean, we've got collection and we've got delivery also. So depending on which one you prefer, you know, collection, you get to meet us, ignorant millennials, and maybe we can take a few snaps here and there. But without any further ado, let's get into today's topic. And uh, let me allow the man to introduce myself. Sir, introduce yourself, sir. Hola, compre. Uh, and yeah, I'm the guy they know as the guy who's into Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. That t-shirt represents Bitcoin. I believe. Yeah, no, it is. The uh. Bitcoin logo. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So this man today is going to be like telling us interesting facts about Bitcoin and breaking it down for us. What is Bitcoin? When did it start? Why is it so booming right now? Why are companies buying into it? Why are companies accepting it as a means of purchase and so forth? So let's, let's, let's take it back there. Mm -hmm. What is Bitcoin? Okay, so Bitcoin is basically a decentralized cryptocurrency. All right. Oh. So um, it is. Ooh, breaks. Mm -hmm. Decentralized. Are you explaining that part in your thing? What's decentralized? Yeah, so decentralized is opposite of how we are used to systems now. Yes. Uh, centralized systems being Boapsa, FNB, Standard yes. Bank, yes. PayPal, yes. where you actually go to one specific site, yeah. apsa.co.za, yeah. or their offices, okay. and put your money there, or, okay. or whatever. And in a decentralized sense, there's no headquarters yes. or anything. There's yes. no offices yes. or company or yes. CEO behind yes. it. Every participant peer to peer mm. can transact in Bitcoin okay. and run the software, run the protocol. Yes. So that is what decentralized is. Okay. And even in the development sense, if you want to develop for Bitcoin, you can also develop. There's no company you're working with. You can submit code and stuff like that. Okay. And so who started this currency and when was it started and what was the reason for starting it? Okay. So the year is 2008. Housing crisis happens yeah. in America, yeah. uh, a recession happens, and then this dude is like, um, the problem with central banks is they require too much trust mm -hmm. uh, because they bailed out mm -hmm. the housing market. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Satoshi Nakamoto is the mm -hmm. guy, and then he's like, yeah. cool, yeah. let's come up with something better. Yeah. And then he proposes Bitcoin, oh, uh, yeah? peer to peer decentralized cryptocurrency. And then in January 2009, mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin starts operating. The Genesis block comes out. Okay. And then mm, we are here. Huh. Okay, so when he started it, did he start it like, so you know, like with money generally, yeah. you print a certain amount of money when you put money into circulation. So with him, did he. No. Did he um, create a certain number of Bitcoins? Yeah. So what happened is that the protocol mm -hmm. is defined to only have 21 million Bitcoins. Yes. Right? And the only way new Bitcoins get added into the supply is 21 by million. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. The only way new Bitcoins get added is yeah. by mining. And okay. when you mine, you get 50 Bitcoin yes. per block. Uh, yes. This was 2009. And every four years, yes. the amount of Bitcoin you get for mining is gets cut in half. Okay. Oh, so in 2021 now, we are at 6.25 Bitcoins for each block that a person mines. So in terms of mining, what is mining? Because you know like... Mm -hmm. We when you say mining, we think of mining. Yeah. So ex explain mi mining. What is mining? Yeah. So since there's no headquarters mm -hmm. to say, okay, cool, your transaction went through. Yeah. Someone has to say, okay, cool, your transaction went through. Yeah. So what that happens? Kadi block, Bitcoin mm -hmm. blocks, and that's why there's a blockchain, in which mm -hmm. all where all these blocks get put. Mm -hmm. uh, and then every ten minutes, someone on average finds a new block and puts everyone's transactions into that block. 
but there's yeah. also a limited uh, limited amount of transactions that can fit in a block yeah yeah so that is mining basically putting all of these transactions in a block yeah. so that they appear in the blockchain Oh, this all just sounds like some video game that was created by, you know, ner- nerds there. Such is life. Try. Such is life. Because, <laughs> uh, so if I'm understanding you correctly, this is money run from code, so yeah. to say. Exactly. Wow. So um, instead of doing the whole, okay, yeah. this currency is going to have yeah. uh, however many yeah. rands, yeah. they were like, okay, this currency now has yeah. zero yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. Mm. People need to mine it so that they get bitcoins yeah. and then the rewards get to, given to the miners and the miners are the first one to transact with everyone else and okay. that's how everyone else gets their bitcoins by buying it from their miners okay mm-hmm. so or i don't know about you guys but so far to bitcoin. me this sounds like we're living in a modern age of empires the game i don't know if you guys remember that which one mm-hmm. one two three <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i just don't remember which sequel it was mm-hmm. but yeah it, it sounds like pretty much because you have to mine it and everything else. So, so then, this per, obviously you said it runs over code. Mm-hmm. So, how op, how open is it to manipulation um, by the pe- people who actually founded it? Yeah. So, the people who actually founded it, are, uh, the person uh, yeah. or the people, and we don't know if it's one person or a group, uh, are not no longer here. Yes. Uh, so, and since it was designed in a way to be decentralized. Yes. They didn't have yeah. more influence than anyone else when it started, yeah. but by them leaving in 2011, yeah. like it's been a full 10 years, yeah. th- they have lost whatever influence they might have had over the 10 years because yeah. people have developed it since 2011 till now and yeah. people have started using it since 2011 till now without their participation at all. Yeah. And it has grown organically. Yeah. Everything you've heard about yeah. Bitcoin is an organic growth. No one pushed it, not even the guy who created it. Yeah, but look, mm-hmm. let's just, I, like, I don't understand code, for mm-hmm. example. Yeah. So, but if I coded something, yeah. all right, mm-hmm. even though I'm dead, mm-hmm. there are certain people who know how to read or interpret that code, yeah. all right? Mm-hmm. So, just in the same way, so they would know what to do in order to influence so it's the same thing yeah, with, so, with the stock market uh-huh. right with the stock markets also th- there's a code mm-hmm. that runs behind the prices of those certain yep. stocks right yeah. hence banks know when something is overbought and oversold and whatever because mm-hmm. they they kind of know the actual code behind that if yeah. you i'm sure you know that like well from what we've watched in these stock market movies and so forth and so mm-hmm. my my question is Somebody like yourself, mm-hmm. perhaps, who studied, block, who studied blockchain and everything else. Yeah. Surely you have a slight more advantage than me in terms of knowing what's going to happen. Uh, it's more of a temporary yeah. advantage, yeah. right? Because it's open source. Yeah. There's nothing stopping you from reading yeah. whatever I read. Yeah. Uh, and there's nothing stopping you from learning whatever I learned. Yeah. Uh, so th- in that case, the code is just there. It's public. It's just there. Uh, okay. So... Um, yeah, even if you don't know how to code, yeah. you can actually learn to code just so you could read the Bitcoin code okay. and verify that there's nothing in it right. yeah. that in benefits the insiders more than mm. everyone else, right? benefits the miners more than the users, benefits the co- programmers more okay. than the users. So, okay. so um, the other thing with Bitcoin is it has all these incentives in yeah. place that make sure that no one is more powerful than everyone else. Okay. Right. So miners, although they get what, what is this the rewards for mining a block, yeah. we also pay them transaction fees for each transaction yeah. that we make. Yeah. Right. And so if a miner decides that okay, I'm gonna mine empty blocks and yeah. not accept everyone else's transactions, yeah. they won't get the transaction fees. Okay. Uh, and the miners who won the transaction fees yeah. are going to mine those transactions so the everyone's transactions end up in the blockchain at the end of the day. Okay. And the one who's not mining transaction fees loses okay. money. Uh, so is Bitcoin a currency or is it an investment asset? Um, depends who, who you ask it. Uh, I'm some, asking you, sir. Um, <laughs> s- the average s- citizen. Somebody, somebody mm-hmm. right now who's hearing this Bitcoin, mm-hmm. how do you describe, best describe it to them? Mm, to me, it's a savings tool. 
It's oh. a savings too, yeah. so it's not a currency. Um, it, it, it is a currency. In some, most currencies today are bad savings tools, yes. but we still use them for savings, yes. right? Because the longer you hold on to the rand, yes. the less you can buy with it yeah. the following year, yeah. right? And they tell you you have a savings account, but it's actually an investment yeah. account because they take your money and yeah. do other things yeah. with it and give you interest in return. Yes. Uh, so with Bitcoin, since it's a deflationary currency, yeah. when you hold on to it, it increases in value and the things you can buy increase in value and keeps increasing okay. in value. So that's why you see people who are like, uh, they bought two pizzas yeah. using 10,000 Bitcoins in 2010 or whatever. And today you ask yourself yeah. what you can get with uh, 10,000 Bitcoins. So my reason for having asked that is because Bitcoin, if you look at it, mm -hmm. its price is more reflective of a stock than an actual currency. Well, because it's, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, what are we looking at now today? Like 56,000, 57,000 dollars? Yeah, 800k yeah. rands. Yeah. So, um, well, the thing with that, that price is because Bitcoin is infinitely divisible, it's a digital currency, yes. right? Um, well, it's not infinitely, yeah. it's actually mm, um, divisible to one Satoshi, which is like 0. Um, 0.0000. Actually, 100 million Satoshis yeah. make up one, bi one okay. Bitcoin. Uh, so, um, the price of a, one Satoshi yeah can still be within a rand, yeah. you know? Like one rand would get you like 1,000 or 100 Satoshis. Yeah. So, it's still relative to our current currencies if you look at how divisible it is. Yeah. And since it's a digital protocol, you can still define it in a way whereby you divide it even further yeah. so that you can purchase more things using less and less and less Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, so you know how there's fractional shares and stuff yeah. like that. So the same concept in Bitcoin. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, we, we should look at it as that. How divisible is Bitcoin so that it can be used for day-to-day -day transactions? I can send you one Satoshi now, yeah. and then you can receive it as less than one rand, yeah. and everyone is happy. Yeah, although like it's 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 kind of like what you're telling me is almost the same thing as like mm. easy equities offers a fraction of a share, whereas there's not actually an ownership of a share. Yeah. So you actually you're not even actually buying the share; you're buying a derivative of the yes. share. Yes. So but, so you, in actual sense you. What you you buy in that fraction has no influence on the value of no, the par so particular stock long uh, term. Unlike easy equities in yeah. Bitcoin, yeah. you own the fraction. Okay. Uh, um, since in the protocol, it's defined as the fraction, as okay. one Satoshi. Okay. And one Satoshi yes. become yes. the 100 million Satoshis mm -hmm. become one Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So in the Bitcoin protocol, you can literally own one mm -hmm. Satoshi okay. or however many Satoshis you want. Oh, 100,000 Satoshis, yeah. 100, uh, ten, and 10 rands worth of Bitcoin as well. You can own it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me three risks of in having investing in Bitcoin. What are the risks? Three, three of them. Mm. There might be a lot, but let's okay. narrow it to three major risks. Investing more than you understand in Bitcoin. Mm. So yeah. um, if you've heard about Bitcoin, at least you understand the name. So at least put 10 rands there. Learn some more, learn some more. Whatever you learn, put more 10 rands on, on your investment or whatever. No, but that doesn't sound like a risk. That is a risk. What is, no, what, like, so, what is the risk? Like, I'll so, lose more money? I'll, like, so it, mm, the I, reason... I think you, 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 you phrasing this risk in a positive no, light. The reason say, is the risk, right? Yeah. Um, mo pe most people know that Bitcoin is volatile. Yes. Right? It's not backed by yes. anything. So there's a probability that it can go from 800k yeah, yeah, to yeah. zero. Yeah. And there's also a probability that it can go from 800k to 800 million yes. as well, right? Nothing is stopping either of these two things from okay. happening. So no. volatility. Second one? Yeah, no, it's still the same of yeah. not understanding this, right? Yeah. So, so since it's second, volatile, this no, is this is still one. the yeah. first point. Okay. Since it's volatile and you don't understand it, yeah. Bitcoin, it goes down by 10% in a day. Yeah. Like, yo, shit, Bitcoin is dying. Yeah. And then you sell. Yes. Uh, and then you had bought at 800K, is now 700K or whatever, yeah. and you lost. Okay. Uh, so yeah. then you buy back in yeah. at a, a, a higher price again, 900K yeah. or whatever the price, and then it drops again at 10%. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's the volatility of it. Okay. So mm -hmm. then, the, then the second. Uh, the risk associated the with investing in Bitcoin? Um, as compared to what? Hmm. 
no in general in, in general there's a risk in associated in anything whether if you're buying a car the risk is that your car might get hijacked mm-hmm. you might be in an accident you okay. get what i'm saying yeah, so they, those are the risks associated with anything that you do in life mm-hmm. the risk of you right now deciding to go to the shop is multiple you could get robbed mm-hmm. you could get hit by a car okay. you could there's, cool. there's, there's, there's there are a lot of risk it's okay. we're not comparing it so you get what i'm saying mm. everything has an inherent risk so what are the inherent risks of, yeah. inv- so, of uh, investing in bitcoin so with regards to bitcoin if you do not mm. own your coins like your yeah. the keys that control your coins yeah. the person who owns those coins can move them without okay. your permission oh. okay. and this is basically what happens when people buy bitcoins off of easy equities off of luna yes oh. luna easy equities are the ones that control those coins yeah. so they can move them when they wish So what people would want to mitigate that risk yeah. is to have their own wallets on their phones or on their laptops. Okay. And then they'd be the only ones with the permission to move those coins. So the risk is that you could lose your money. Your money could get stolen if you don't control your coins. All right. Not your keys, not your coins. Okay, so explain mm-hmm. the keys and the coins. Yeah, so Bitcoin uses cryptography yes. and cryptography requires yes. keys to sign every transaction. Okay. Uh, so those keys are private keys. So, okay. So you need to keep them private yes. so that you don't lose them and yes. you need to make sure that the coins that are you think you own yes. are controlled by your private keys. Okay. Yeah. So you don't just buy it off Luna and then let yeah. it sit on Luna yes. for 10 years because who knows what Luna yes. is going to do with the coins. Who knows if Luna is going to be operational in 10 years. Okay. So, best thing when you have accumulated enough bitcoin move them to your own wallet okay mm-hmm. all right all right then the third and last risk then the mm-hmm. third risk is all these other coins that are you know huh, shining on uh, bitcoin's shadow huh. yeah. so uh, um it becomes a little harder to explain bitcoin to everyone else to uh, to even uh, in transact with other people because okay. they are using altcoins and stuff like yes. that cuz Those are generally cheaper. Your Ethereum is generally cheaper. Yeah. Your Dogecoin is de- de- it's yeah. cheaper. But they don't have the same properties as Bitcoin. Oh, Explain that. Like decentralized yeah. uh, Ethereum has Ethereum yeah. foundation behind it yeah. and those are the guys pushing okay. development and all okay. these things. Ripple has whatever the company called Ripple behind yeah. it pushing it in the banks. Yeah. Uh, Dogecoin has Elon Musk for some reason I don't know why. So Yeah, um if you're trying to teach people about Bitcoin, you go from oh yeah, Bitcoin is on to trade to oh shit, you have a shit coin in your hands, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, um that that is something else. People need to differentiate between Bitcoin and everything else. So, it sounds like you are against investing in Ethereum Dogecoin no, and all the others. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, uh, know what it is you're investing in. Mm. Uh, because they don't have the same properties as Bitcoin. And no so are they less secure than Bitcoin? Well, if a person knows what they're investing in, if they want to say, oh, this is um, uh, has a probability of increasing by how much amount in whatever shit coin it is, yeah. feel free, have fun. So oh. what moves Bitcoin, mm-hmm. like its price up, yeah. then what moves Ethereum, for example, its price up? Okay, so Bitcoin pure demand and supply? Yes. Uh, and if you look at the charts of most of these coins, yeah. they move in correlation to how Bitcoin has moved. Yeah. So on the days that Bitcoin went down, yeah. they all went down. And then obviously when Bitcoin is doing good, they all do good. And then there are days where Bitcoin is sideways, like, you know, it's just 800k and this is what we call yeah. out season. Uh, all the other coins yeah. are um, marketing hard and right. getting all, all the people on them. I hear you when you say demand and supply move mm-hmm. up Bitcoin's price, but last week Bitcoin was like, for example, like $46,000. Today we're saying at like $57,000. Mm-hmm. So explain to me what happened when it fell to forty six. Was the demand, like, does the demand just decrease rapidly in one day? Mm. Explain that. Yes. Yeah, so and what would cause that? That's w- the volatility. Right. Okay. Nothing backs it. Yeah. So um, people, as I'm saying, people mm, are just selling it. Yeah, right. yeah. And goes back to only investing as much as you understand. Yes. Right. Yeah. So um, people bought, bought it 800k and then it went down by 1% by 2%. They're like, "Oh, it's going down. Let me sell." Yeah. And then someone else did the same thing. Let yeah. me sell 4%, 5% until it got to that yeah. 46k or whatever. Yeah. And then it got back up again yeah. because 
whenever you sell, you're selling to someone who believes, believes Bitcoin yeah, yeah. value is going to be higher. Yeah. So obviously, whoever you're selling to yeah. is going to hodl yeah. until the price comes it's back that, to where it yeah. was and it or goes up to where they want to sell. Okay. So that's where the volatility comes in. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. So then give me, as I'm watching and listening to this video, mm-hmm. give me three reasons why I should invest in Bitcoin? Uh, uh, the first one, look at all the currencies that have died. Uh, Zimbabwe, Venezuela, Argentinian peso, Turkish yeah, lira. But that's because of political Lebanese. and instability. I don't think- Yeah, we, we can, have politics we, too. We, we can- What is the difference from our politics and their politics? But to be fair, those are like develop, emerging markets that you were mentioning that up were prone and if you look at it, in all of those instances it's okay. because of the leaders did not want to leave see, uh, okay. well, <laughs> um, presidency so i think we can use that as good example okay well that's yeah. the first one even if you don't want to use it yeah it can still happen to you right yeah. and even greece had a currency collapse a few yes. years ago in 2000 yes. in, in the 2000s okay i don't yeah. think they had the same properties yes. as yeah. all the other countries zambia is having yeah. a currency collapse yeah. now yeah. And I don't think they had the same properties as Zimbabwe, but all these currencies share similar properties to each other, yeah. which is fiat. But but to be fair also, Hotato, people mm-hmm. don't look at Bitcoin as a currency. They look at it as an investment vehicle, like a stock. Yeah, so hence, I, I want to move away from moving from, because people don't go, let me go and buy dollars today. Yeah, right? so, so I want us to move away from looking at it in the sense of, although it's described as a currency, mm-hmm. general public anybody who invests in it they don't view it, they don't invest in it because i'm like i'm investing in a currency yeah they so, foresee it as i'm investing there's an there's a fee, there's an investment asset like a stock mm-hmm. so that's why i want to move away from comparing it to other currencies collapsing and looking mm-hmm. at it in terms of generally the general person right now if they say oh i got bitcoin or whatever mm-hmm. they, they're not saying oh, i'm buying dollars they're just looking at it like ah nah well, this thing is otherwise people would have long ago been buying rents because re- the rent is very volatile also Mm. And your Mexican pesos are very volatile also. Mm-hmm. They would have been investing in those ones. Yeah. So they, they're looking at it more from an investment vehicle. So, so. Well, you know, everyone has the, yeah. w- w- their own ways of uh, looking at things. Yeah. And obviously there's no right or wrong things. Uh, yeah. Right choices, yeah. wrong choices. Yeah. So there's only consequences. Yes. Right? Uh, the Bitcoin technology allows yes. it to be used as yes. a currency. Yes. Right? People are using it as an investment option. Yes. Right? But if ever there's a day where the rent is dying, yes. right? I already know what I'll be using. Oh. Yes. And yeah, um, to avoid the consequences of the rent dying in my possession. Oh. Yes. Uh, to avoid this, my savings uh, drying up. Yes. Uh, while I'm planning to retire early yes. in my uh, 40 years of yes. age. Oh. So yeah, Bitcoin be, is, can be used as an investment, can be used as a currency. The yes. technology allows for yes. both. If you use it as an investment, number goes up, you're good. If you use it as a currency, okay. there's all this technology, second layer okay. technology that allows you to transact yeah. with almost everyone you yeah. want to transact yeah. with. Oh. Yeah. And uh, you said three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, the second one, uh-huh. why you should invest in Bitcoin, it teaches you a lot about how currencies work. Okay. Right, because It has all the basics of currency and learning how Bitcoin actually has even a value of one rand will lead to why we actually value certain things. Is scarcity really a reason why we value things? And that is the value proposition of Bitcoin, only 21 million Bitcoin. And then reason number three, it's a cool technology. Right, okay. decentralized nature. We yes. we should yes. learn how to implement more decentralized platforms. Yeah. Right, um, there was a reason why we had centralized yeah. platforms because it was much easier to, to uh, yeah. do uh, make yeah. a centralized platform yeah. when we didn't have the technology. Yeah. But now we have technology yes. to make decentralized uh, okay. platforms. So how are we then transitioning from centralized to decentralized okay. where possible? Because okay. the technology allows us to go okay. to a much more decentralized. Uh, thing huh? okay. so um, yeah that's basically my three reasons um it might save you when your currency dies uh what was the second one? i forgot it and um, <laughs> yeah. um what, what, what was the third one? Oh, so your first one is yeah you, so basically you touched on the fact that you can be used both as an investment vehicle mm-hmm. and a currency yeah and mm-hmm. that's where you initially started yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. okay. so that's basically it mm. okay so then where how can i invest in bitcoin 
where what, what are the tools in okay. terms of or, or what are the applications that i need to log into and whatever what mm. is the means of transacting bitcoin yeah so first peer to peer you know uh, find someone who already has bitcoin and ask them yo can i buy this much bitcoin from you and if they say yes receive it yeah. but protect yourself how do i buy it though? uh well if that, it's uh, if it's yeah. a trade i have bitcoin i'm like give me uh, 10 rands and i'll give you this much bitcoin that's a trade okay. yeah but mm -hmm. how do we so my thing is mm -hmm. how where where, where where is this yeah but li literally this is, is, is it yeah. is it do I, we both have to have a Luno account? So that's no, what I'm getting to. If you have a Bitcoin whatever. wallet, I have a Bitcoin wallet. I can send it to you directly. Okay. Right. And so then, how do I get that Bitcoin wallet? What do we download oh, yeah, Bitcoin wallet? Many apps uh, yeah. on the internet. Okay. Uh, so just mm, type Bitcoin wallet. There's Blockstream Green. There's yeah. Phoenix Wallet. Yes. There's Electrum. Yes. There's many, many apps okay. and many scams as okay. well. So be sure you have one that okay. won't cheat you out of yeah. your Bitcoins. And then secondly, you okay. can then buy it off Luno by creating a Luna okay. account okay. and yeah it's more convenient than yeah. finding someone who already has Bitcoin yeah. uh, you don't have to yeah. fear that someone okay. will rob you while okay. you are doing a transaction yeah. and yeah you, you know you just buy it off them and then uh, you can get the option to withdraw your coins mm. and then there's Alcoin Trader and all these places and Easy Equities as an index yeah. if you are afraid of mm. um, owning your Bitcoin yeah. where so they own it on your behalf yeah. and yeah. then expose the price yeah. to you okay. and then when the price goes up you're good when the price goes down you i don't know if you're good if the okay. price goes down and yeah you can sell it whenever you feel like selling it like a share okay and yeah that's basically all these platforms okay all right all right so mm -hmm. you're about to wrap it up i don't know so I'm, i'll give you a floor of two minutes anything mm. that you feel that we should share with everybody mm. about bitcoin that we didn't necessarily cover Oh. Uh, in the last 20 minutes oh yeah uh if everyone feels like reading they should read a book called the bitcoin standard yes and it's available on the internet the offer doesn't mind if you use mm. piracy to get a copy so feel free to get a copy at all means and uh, the other one is called bitcoin money there's an audio book on youtube mm -hmm. um how bitville discovered good money it's a kid's book actually so you could read it to your mm. kids and yes. they could learn about what makes a good money mm -hmm. and they could learn about inflation and stuff like that from the book it's like a 15 minute read okay. and yeah it's open source learn how to write code so that you can develop for bitcoin oh and i might be selling hoodies soon so maybe look in the comment section for a link uh -huh. okay yeah okay so you talked about learning how to code with bitcoin are you doing that yourself ah uh, no i'm doing other stuff uh -huh. okay so i'm working on a vpn app so sure. yeah and Ooh. the bitcoin stuff is um, i'm more interested in the education oh, like, wow. how do we get it in the township and all these other things okay uh -huh. all so. right all right mm -hmm. thank you very much Hotazo, for joining us and ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. there we have it we are about to wrap it up please do not forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel and as the gentleman has said we will provide his details in the description below the video mm -hmm. as to where you can how you can get a hold of Hotazo and how he can you know help you in terms of your educational journey about bitcoin trust me this is the man this man has been heavily invested <laughs> in bitcoin both monetary and in terms of education and skill i think two years or three years or how long is it uh since uh religiously since 2017 sure oh. yeah, when when a man says religiously <laughs> i think of the bible people who read the bible they read it every day so i would assume every day he's reading something about bitcoin mm. or monitoring it and he meditates on bitcoin like, so ladies and gentlemen mm. this is the man you definitely want to hit up sure sure all right here we have it we out mm.